Hello, good and faithful people of the Church of the Mediator. It's Father Dale. I hope you're well today. Listen to this petition from the Great Litany, that it may please thee to send forth laborers into thy harvest and to draw all mankind into thy kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. Before I talk any more about the Great Litany, a reminder that we are coming up on the fifth Sunday in Lent, this Sunday, March 26th. You'll be here celebrating the Holy Eucharist as usual at 9 a.m. in English, in La Santa Misa in Espanol at 1 p.m. Now back to the Great Litany, my friends, which we will use, we will sing, we will pray for the second time in Lent this Sunday as the entrance rite of our liturgy. And that little petition, that it may please thee to send forth laborers into thy harvest and to draw all mankind into thy kingdom, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, is a petition that was added to the Great Litany in the 1890s in the Episcopal Church, a petition that God, that Christ, would stir up those to labor in the harvest, to spread the good news, to draw all people into God's kingdom, into God's household, the church. The Great Litany, as I note in the notes that I wrote in the leaflet, uh, was first promulgated in 1544. It was the first liturgy of the English church that was rendered in English, not no longer in Latin. In 1544, King Henry VIII and England were at war uh, and King Henry wanted to, wanted to invite the people to intercede for their nation. And so Archbishop Thomas Cranmer put together the Great Litany from a number of sources, medieval sources, and some sources like Martin Luther's German Litany that came out in 1544 in English and became a standard uh, prayer that was used in Anglicanism not only on Wednesdays and Fridays throughout the year, but also every Sunday up until relatively recently, uh, parishes were expected to pray morning prayer, followed by the litany, and then followed by the Holy Communion. We've lost that practice, but I wanted to mention to you a little bit about the structure of the litany as I, as I brought forward that petition that was added to the litany. It's kind of good to have an idea of how something like this liturgy is structured. So the litany begins with invocations. Now it's important to know that unlike many of the prayers that we pray on a Sunday morning that are addressed to God the Father, the great litany is predominantly addressed to God the Son, to Jesus. And so we begin invoking the Holy Trinity, God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy upon us. God the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God, the Holy Ghost, sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy upon us. O holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, one God, have mercy upon us. So we invoke the, the Holy Trinity, but then we turn very quickly into speaking directly to Christ. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses. And this next section of the liturg liturgy, after the opening invocations to the Trinity, is what are called the deprecations. Deprecation is a big word for basically saying, deliver us, O Lord. And that is literally what the people's response is. Good Lord, deliver us from all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation. Good Lord, deliver us. The deprecations continue and ask God, ask Christ, to deliver us from everything, from false doctrine and heresy and schism, to lightning and tempest, earthquake, fire, flood, from plague, pestilence, and famine. The deprecations then we turn the litany to the third section, which is called the obsecrations, uh, which is a big word for setting before Christ, events of Christ's life, asking that by them we be delivered. So we respond, good Lord, deliver us by the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity. Uh, by thy agony and bloody sweat, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, 
Good Lord, deliver us. Oh, Christ, we're asking Jesus to deliver us through the power of these various events in Jesus's life. The next section of the litany is called the intercessions. And this is a long list of things that we pray for. Everything from the church and bishops, priests, and deacons, and sending forth laborers into the harvest and drawing all humankind into God's kingdom, to praying for the president and for those who govern and have authority in the nations of the world, praying for women in childbirth and young children and orphans, for widow widows, um, for those who are suffering and sick, uh, for pardon and remission of our sins. And there's that wonderful petition in the section of intercessions that it may please thee to strengthen such as do stand, to comfort and help the weak-hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. The litany culminates with a section of renewed invocations to Jesus, Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us, uh, Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us, and O oh Christ, hear us, O oh Christ, hear us, and then we commence the liturgy as we normally would with the Kyrie eleison, Lord, have mercy upon us, Kyrie eleison in Greek. That's a little bit about the Great Litany, my friends, 1544. It is a deep tradition of ours in the Episcopal Church and in Anglicanism across the globe. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning to chant this litany with you. Until then, blessings.